Hello. Hi, excuse me, my voice. <laughs> America, America, American people, Chinese people are not your enemy. Chinese people are not your enemy. They don't want to fight you. They never have. I have lived in China since 2015. And coming from where I do, which is South Africa, as a single parent and a woman with a little girl, I have uh, now, I have traveled pretty extensively, but I would say I have never felt as safe as I have felt here in China. In China, I have been able to live in neighborhoods with my door unlocked most of the time. My child has played with their children in shopping malls and play zones and kindergartens and schools. We've never had any issues. We've never even had any racial issues. Maybe that is because I, I happen to be a white person or Caucasian person and they, they tend to view Caucasians more, favor, more favorably than they do people with darker skin. That I think, however, is, is a, an ancient sort of archaic remnant of a of maybe something they had in their past but generally speaking I've never experienced any problems they do stare at you every now and then especially now after covid era because there's not many foreigners in china anymore but they're not mean they're not mean They don't hate you. They don't hate us. They don't hate Westerners. They don't hate. There's very little hate and aggression and anger from Chinese people towards the West. In fact, they really try very hard to educate themselves as much as they can within their capacity here to educate, to really educate themselves as to what's going on outside the borders of their own country. They're very sincere in their efforts about this. They educate their children in English and other languages too, to get them to be able to have options when maybe they can possibly leave China one day for other jobs, or even if they came back to China, it would further their chances for better careers, having English under their belt. They are very open, very open, to hearing other viewpoints, hearing your take on the world, hearing what goes on in your country. They really are. Sometimes the older generation will maybe just have a little bit of resistance because maybe they've just experienced a different paradigm and they just can't compute or they can't, can't really understand so much because they've just lived such a different life. So often the much older generation won't really kind of even try to talk to you that much. But the younger generation, oh well, uh, my generation, I wouldn't really say it's younger generation, but like they just say my generation, I'm like 40, 43. Uh, my generation and the generation under me, younger generations, very, very open. Very, very open to discussion. Very, very open to talking about Whatever you want to talk about, they're not limited. I would add, as a general observation about the general character of the Chinese people, in my experience, is that they strive, they strive to be impeccable. They strive to be impeccable. They, they have such a, an openness to learning. 
they are contrary to popular belief actually not really stuck in their ideas they are open to hearing others without shutting them down how often does that happen in the west these days how often do you have someone fully hear out your viewpoint from the time you start till the time you end and then think about it in my experience that's been chinese people they don't shut me down if, if i tell them something that happens where i come from or in my experience i have yet to be shut down in fact i have experienced more shutting down from other westerners than i ever have from chinese people when i said that they strive to be impeccable they have such deep within their culture such a love of learning and wanting to know more wanting to know the real deal for their culture as well they're always they'll they'll always learn an instrument when they're you know i don't know if you want to research the tiger mom syndrome but like bad or good whatever i'm not going to judge but every kid learns an instrument and that's laying down certain brain pathways in a certain way i don't always agree with their parenting practices i don't always agree with the way how how little freedom and free free time their children have or that their children are given but i cannot knock how family oriented these people are chinese people are so if anything they're totally family oriented family to them is everything in fact family to them is, is so important that growing up and becoming and being unmarried without kids is sort of regarded as like you've you haven't done your thing yet you know people are waiting for you to do that they're extremely family centered they want healthy nuclear families plus the grandparents they want their children to have the best possible education from i don't agree with this from as young as possible but you know that's their way of doing things best possible education that they can possibly have other languages too they really strive to give their children the very best of everything that they can and potentially also what they were never able to have as kids themselves this is this is chinese people this is the heart of them their cost of living is not low here their property the houses the the, the rentals the uh, the apartments that they can buy are not cheap they're extremely expensive getting a car as well you also have to pay for the parking space and that's also pretty exorbitant even especially within cities the cost of living just getting through for the average chinese person just getting through average daily life for one month takes up all of their energy and i'm not sure how they put aside much money on the side it's probably double income like the the mom or the man and the woman both work so they they're, they're saving up as well but their salaries i mean as a westerner working here i think i have pretty much always earned more than the average chinese person here that seems to be the policy i wish that they would could earn as more as me because i mean in terms of our abilities in terms of our experience i mean sure i have different experience and abilities to them but that doesn't mean that they should get paid that much less than me basically they get very average sometimes above average salaries but 
life takes a lot from them. Taxes they pay, the cost of living, paying for a house or a car. Children's education is through the roof. Maybe that's why I get the salary I do. Maybe that's why. I don't think I have an enormous salary, no, but I'd say it's decent. I get a decent salary. The average Chinese teacher in my same position would not make what I do. I think also Westerners get paid more because they're here and because they're Western and maybe because of, you know, the way we look. It looks different. It looks, it looks international. And so that's, that's the brand they're selling or that's the, that's the idea that they want to parlay into their education as well. So I benefit. I do benefit from that. It's kind of ironic because in my own country, South Africa, because I, I, I am the way I am and because I look the way I look, I am greatly disadvantaged in my own country for getting a job. If you look up BEE in, in South Africa, Black, Black Empowerment, uh, is it initiative? I'm not sure. Um, basically, it's very difficult for white people, anybody aside from being black. If you're, if you're Chinese, if you're a mixed race, if you're white, if you're Indian, something else, you, you have much lower chances of being employed than the average um, black South African. It's sort of like the, um, it's the ratio of the population, 80%, um, that there are 80% black people in South Africa. And then there's, I think there was, in the last statistic that I read, there's like 13, there were 13% white people and then 7% the other races so maybe it's Chinese maybe it's mixed race maybe Indian and so on and so forth so basically they've factored that into companies like if a company employs 10 people if if a, if a company employs any amount of people 80 percent of those people need to be black South African and then 13 percent can be white and seven percent can be the other group. It's just the way it is. So basically in a company of, a small company of 10 people, eight of those employees must be black South African. One or two, maybe one. One can be white and one can be Indian. Or one can be white and one can be colored or, you know, pick something. That's South Africa. So it's so weird. Like I left my country because Number one, safety, and number two, of employment opportunity, the lack of employment opportunities. And so for that, it's, it's so strange how I come from a country where I was disadvantaged for my skin color. And now I'm in a, in a country where I am greatly advantaged, ad, listen to me, greatly advantaged for my skin color. That's really ironic. Anyway, back to Chinese people. Yeah, so a lot of their lives are spent, you know, just making it. Things are really expensive here. They do the best they can. They work so hard. They have such a, a work ethic that you, you wouldn't believe it. They fall asleep standing up on trains and subways sometimes, in buses. They work even when they don't have to. They work all day and then in their free time, they're even looking for more opportunities to work or sell things. At no matter what, to keep saving money, to keep bringing money in. In, in their social lives, uh, they're lively, happy people who love company and love their friends. And are very loyal to their friends and their co-workers. They like to get drunk. Their, uh, their alcohol of choice is baiju, which is pretty high alcohol content. They love to get drunk, and their thing is they don't dance. Chinese people don't dance here in China. Well, some of them do. The old ladies do in the squares in the evenings. They they do that because, you know, that's just their thing. They love doing that. Everybody dances in the same formation to the same steps. They all know the same steps. It's, it's really cute. 
but the younger generation and like like my my generation and younger they don't really dance but what they do do is they go to kcb and they sing they sing together they get drunk and they sing together and that's their outlet that's their emotional outlet for whatever's going on with them they're extremely sensitive emotionally i'll explain like as they're growing up their faces are not very mobile you'll notice like they're they have generally in my estimation maybe to each other they can sense small slight differences but generally they men, main, a lot of them maintain poker face a poker face a lot of the time that there's the expression is sort of just deadpan and if they're happy yes they can smile and laugh about something but if they're sad or angry or hurt or you said something that was maybe they could have taken offense to it won't show up it won't show up on their face they won't show it immediately like if it was me it would show up immediately you'd see it so clearly and i think i must be like an open book to them absolutely open book but they won't show it however this this doesn't, them not showing the way they're feeling and also probably not saying it does not mean that they, they want to hide it from you or that they're trying to lie to you or that they're trying to hide something from you. They have been experiencing this way of dealing with things their whole life since they were babies. It's just, it's something that's in them and it's it's in their family and it's just what they do around each other they don't broadcast their uh, their emotions very quickly unless of course they've been absolutely triggered by something then they're immensely angry and it's the the straw that broke the camel's back or something then they'll hit the roof and they'll be crazy angry but when they do that not clear showing of how they're feeling or or they won't tell you how they're feeling it's not because they're trying to keep something from you or they're trying to be manipulative or they're you know sort of trying to hide something from you on purpose it's just because they've been that way ever since they were born and everybody else around them was doing something similar or maybe encouraged it or if, if a kid was like being too bold with their facial expressions you know older generation might be you know telling them like hey tone it down a bit you don't need to show your face to us so that much you know there's that and, and i'm going to keep coming back to how busy their lives are they work generally during the week from morning till night and how moderate their salaries are and how very little free time they have and also the little free time that they allow themselves to and how hard they work their children and where their children where they want their children to go and be and what potentiality potentialities they want for their kids and how they'll try and outfit themselves and their children for greeting the wide world out there and not just being insular and all about their own country they are very open they do wish for their children to venture out and to make friends with others, to meet others, to have communication, to have dialogue, to exchange ideas, to work with other races. They are really open to this. I've actually been feeling like they have such a thirst and a longing for this. China had been so so close for so long and now, now well, recently, before COVID, it was open for quite a while. And they have a real longing for this. They don't want to take from you. And they don't want to hurt and maim. They are probably one of the most unaggressive countries I've ever come across. There's something else. Like, I'm going to say something about white people. And people may get annoyed by this. Like, okay. There's... 
there is a kind of, not all white people, but a lot of them, there's a kind of aggression and insecurity a bit about quite a lot of white people. Aggression and anger, there's a very, it's, a, it's under the, it's not very deep, but you can, it, it's very easily triggered, this deep, sharp anger, and I'll explain. Metal groups, heavy metal groups, music, heavy metal, death metal, uh, I don't know, whatever different kind of metal you want to hear. What demographic, what ethnicity, what, what skin color usually are the people in those groups? I'll wait. They're, they're usually white, right? They're usually white, frequently coming from like Northern Europe, European nations. But if it's even if it's from America or from from the UK, they're almost always white people, right? Yeah, they. And the music is really loud and angry and jangly and screaming. Like I, I've never, there's some heavy metal that I'm able to listen to, but a lot of it to me is just like noise, man. And it's angry. It's so angry. A lot of it is kind of furious, right? Anyway, you go ahead and see if you can find a heavy metal group made up of Chinese people. Try. Or even Asians. There's probably a few like a few out there, but they're like the exception to the rule or something. They really are very rare. They're a rare bird. Generally, metal and heavy metal is white people. It just is. Argue with me if you like, but Chinese people, I'm going to say Asians in general, Asians in general, and Chinese in particular are really non-aggressive, especially in terms of like the music that they make, the music they make and the music that they love to listen to. It's never aggressive. It's never angry. It's never angry. It's never hate-filled. A lot of their music, I'll tell you the truth, like in my opinion, is kind of sappy to my tastes. To my taste. But I'm a white person. Like, rock, what do I know? To my tastes, their music is sappy, romantic, schmaltzy. I can't listen to it to very, for very long because I start to feel like, oh my God, I'm going to start getting soft or something. I'm just going to, I don't know, I just, it just feel, feels too schmaltzy for me. But to them, they love it. They, they love romantic music. They love music that speaks from the soul of true romance and um, just loving something and admire, admiration and seeing beauty in something and the feeling of first love and like missing someone, missing someone's home, ties to home, love for home and country and that kind of thing. I can't remember the last time I heard an angry Asian song or an angry Chinese song. I think I did hear an angry Chinese song a while ago and it was a rapper complaining about foreigners or Weigarin. Weigarin does mean foreigners to Chinese people. But generally, no, they're angry. Their, their music is really chill and really, well, maybe not chill, but it's some of it's really poppy and snappy and it's, um, what do you call it, memorable, memorable. Like I'll, I'll be thinking of that song later because it's, it's, it's cool to listen to. That's so, it's not angry. It's not angry. It's never angry. And if you, if you look at them going about their lives, what they're listening to and what they're watching, same thing. They're really quite cultured. They read books. They watch TV shows. I've seen like a lot of, yeah, there's, they, they've got their, their soaps and their soap operas and their TV plays and everything. Yeah, 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 okay. But I've never seen them being into something that I would worry about that's made me think, oh God, this is, I've got to be careful. I have never seen 
a Chin seen or experienced a Chinese person around me being into something and me like as a secondhand observer going, oh, I don't feel safe here anymore. I have never experienced that. Never. And I have, I, to this day, I feel really safe here. As a South African female, this has been the safest country I've inhabited ever. And I feel that confident about it here that I've been happy to have my daughter here with me too. I mean, that's the only choice. I can only ever have my daughter with me, but it's wonderful. It's been really, really wonderful. So what I'm gearing, what I'm heading towards is that Chinese people, just uh, Chinese people, just on their own time, on their own. Can you see my eye twitching? I don't know. This one is twitching. You'll probably see it in a second. No, it's not twitching anymore. Anyway, you will in a second. If I'm doing this. You will. Yeah, I'm just letting you know. Okay. Chinese people are not on in their downtime and on their own time and in their like daydreaming time. In their daydreaming time, they are not thinking of taking out Americans or foreigners with pot shots to the head. They're not thinking of that. They're, they really don't hold much animosity in them. It's just not there. They, they don't have the time also. I mean, you'd think that people would, would get annoyed by the news and just sort of have like a general feeling about like another country. But I'll tell you what, like I, I keep coming back to it. These people work so hard. They have very moderate salaries and they have very little free time or downtime. They work their kids so hard. They have no time to be worrying about other countries. They have no time or wherewithal or energy to be thinking bad or whatever thoughts about anywhere, anybody or anywhere else because they're just trying to get through the day themselves. They're just trying to get, get through the day. They're trying to do the best they can for themselves and their families. They're trying to accrue or collect or save up for their kids when the kid grows up and needs to go to university or needs to go abroad or something. They're always thinking of the future and they're always saving up and putting it away for that. That, that, is, that pretty much takes up all of them. All of their mental energy is going into that the whole time. There's no room. There's no energy. There's no extra, I don't know, uh, focus, extra push for like angry thoughts about America or angry thoughts about uh, England or where, pick a, pick a country, whatever. I don't know. Angry thoughts about this or whatever. They don't really have it there. I mean, yes, in their news, they'll see, they'll sometimes see some like disturbing stories or, I don't know, um, I don't want to, I don't want to say incendiary, but like, like a story that'll make them go, oh, that country, oh, maybe they're not doing very well. There'll be stuff in the news that they'll get annoyed about, sure, and there'll be stuff in the news that they'll get like a little bit about, but they, they're not a people to sit and stew and build up hatred and these icicles of resentment and things that build up in them that they'd be happy and willing to take out a person's life. I just haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. So if you're being told from any one point, whether it's in a movie or from a politician or it's uh, coming from a newspaper or a song or whatever, that China's coming for you or China hates you, Chinese, Chinese whoever, la la la, gonna, gonna come and, you know, find your family. They're probably... If that ever happens, they're doing it probably because they have a gun to their head to do it. They're not doing this from their own impetus, from their own um, decisions, from their own... Like, if there ever happened to be Chinese soldiers in your country, it's because they, th they thought they had no other choice. They think they have no other choice. They, they're just there because they've been told to. 
They're not there because they hate you. There is no problem with the Chinese people for you. Chinese people watch movies from the West. They, they watch Hollywood movies. They love them. They have such respect and regard for a lot of the West's music and movies. And so many of them, like as soon as they have the money and the opportunity, they want to go abroad and travel and experience things. Why would they want to do that if they hated you? No. They don't hate you. They never did. And just something to add, um, you'll notice it's getting dark. It's like sunset, so that's why the light's fading. I need to add this. You know, in American movies, um, there's a whole there's a whole bunch of actually not even not always American movies, but there's a whole genre of kung fu movies, kung fu karate movies, like from the eight sixties, seventies, eighties, even nineties. And it's just Chinese people and Japanese people just kicking ass, kicking ass with the Kung Fu and the Karate. And they're just taking names and they are amazing. And there's no way you could ever beat that. And they're just so incredible. The talent is incredible. It's amazing. And you'd think if all you ever watched, if all you ever watched was Kung Fu movies and Karate movies out of China and out of Japan, you would think... You would think that if you went to China or Japan, you would touch down on the ground and every person you walk past would be able to whip your ass with karate and kung fu. No. The people who watch the most kung fu and karate movies are white people. It's true. White people do that. White Americans, white South Africans, white Australians, wherever you go, white people with their eyes. Like if, if you were like me, and if you were like a boy, I'm not going to say, if you were a boy like me, no. If you were a boy and you were my age, growing up, you would have a certain number of kung fu and karate movies in your head that you just like blow you away. Just You just love them. They're just amazing to you. You have so much respect for that. There's so much admiration. And you probably think... Wow, you know, if we ever had to fight the Chinese or had to fight the Japanese, they would, we'd have to be ninja level, you know, to, to, to sort of even be on par. We'd have to, we'd have to be like amazing, you know, like they're ninjas. They're amazing. They have these super human abilities and it's incredible. They don't do that here. The, the Chinese people here. And also the other Asian people that I have known and and lived quite closely with, they don't watch. Well, the generation that I'm part of and the generation that's younger than me, they don't watch kung fu movies like Americans do, like the West does. The, the East does not watch martial arts movies like the West does. They just don't. I think what it is, it's... Like, yes, it was part of their culture. Yes, it was part of their history and, like, maybe their country before. But it was, like, part of, like, that age. And, yes, you can still learn the skills now. Yes, they do still send their, some, of, some of their kids, not all, to these lessons and everything. But I think maybe a lot of Western people think when they touch down in China or they touch down in Japan or one of these countries, they're just going to see amazing kung fu everywhere. You will probably see old people in the park doing tai chi. That's what you will see. They do have classes here. They do have people who are very good. But the average person walking down the street that you think, oh, if we ever got into fisticuffs, if we ever had a disagreement, you know, they'd, they'd, so they'd annihilate me in three seconds. They're just people. And they probably, you know, that... The Kung Fu thing was a while back. Nowadays, you know, they're busy. They're really busy. And they're just dealing with what they got to deal with. Kung Fu is not the first thing on their mind and it's not their go-to. Karate is not the first thing that's on their mind and it's not their go-to. 
they're probably more worried about Americans with guns. Americans with guns who have always had guns. That's probably what they're more worried about. They don't hate you. Just remember that. They don't hate you. And they don't, they don't want to kill you. And they don't want to hurt you. And they don't want to destroy your family because they would hate it if you destroyed theirs. Their family is everything to them. And their friends and their community. It's, it's kind of funny about the Kung Fu because I've actually known, I've had a few friends, white friends, who've been really into Kung Fu and really into karate before they came to China. And I feel like once they got here, they were so disappointed that it wasn't there. Well, it, it is here, it is here, but it's, it's not like you think it is from the movies from the 70s or the 80s where Kung Fu was just crazy amazing. There are people living modern life here, modern life, dealing with mortgages, dealing with car payments, trying to get their kids to school on time, getting their kids through all the bloody homework they have to do. That's their fight. That's their fight. Just like everybody else. Just trying to get through the day, trying to get through the week. Make mom and dad happy. That's their fight. Is it different from yours? Is it that different? <laughs> anyway, yeah.